I got back from my mission in 2009, and uh, I went with my little brother out to uh, California to run a race, for him to run a race. Um, and uh, he, uh, he was in eighth grade, he was running the seventh and eighth graders race um, at a, a regional meet out there for high school and junior high kids. And um, thought, you know, I was out there, there was a parents supporters race, so I jumped in the race, um, you know, just to run the course. and. Uh, the NCAA ended up ruling that that was an official race and um, the ruling was that I had been delaying enrollment because I was on a mission and uh, racing to try to gain a competitive advantage over other NCAA athletes. And so obviously this has probably been a very frustrating experience for you just trying <laughs> to go through and explain what actually happened. But I understand, so you've been going through the appeal process. And can you right. kind of give us an update from that point until what's happened now? Through? Right, right. Um, so they uh, they did an appeal um, six months ago or so, just saying, hey, he's in a position. We want this year back. Um, and the NCAA denied it when they did a second appeal, and it got denied again. Um, and so it was kind of close case. We're just done. And then in light of recent events, you know, uh, collegiate athletes in similar situations um, that lost eligibility uh, and then getting it reinstated by the NCAA kind of put a re-energizing boost into you know our compliance department and team and th into thinking you know what this case was a similar case we'd just like to do the same thing. Right so are you gonna have the chance is that tomorrow they said that you'll be able to talk to a committee and explain the situation and hopefully right. uh, they can make a final decision. Yeah the, the news right now from the NCAA is that they are standing behind their original ruling they're not reversing the uh, the decision they made but they have provided for a subcommittee for me to meet with along with uh, the athletic directors and uh, coach and uh, discuss with them um, to try to give our case uh, and hopefully get something overturned so I can race Friday. <laughs> so you explained to me that you just weren't even expecting to not be able to race this season. Mm -hmm. You just kind of expected, okay, I'll get my three years and by that time I'll get an appeal. Can you explain that just so we have that on record as well? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I, uh, you know, when we initially put it on the uh, questionnaire when I got back from my mission, we assumed that NCAA uh, would look at this. We were aware of an appeals process and um, didn't feel that I was in any way in a violation to the spirit of the law or the intent for which the rule is. Um, and so we just assumed that this would get overturned. Uh, and so when we finally put together an appeal and got it back and they said no, uh, we were shocked that, um, because we, we really felt like this would be overturned. Uh, come around, you know, two months later, there was another appeal where it went to a subcommittee of the NCAA. And we thought, all right, subcommittee, they'll look at it and, uh, and overturn it. And uh, we were shocked when they upheld the original decision. And going back to 2009, I mean, you never would have even gone in that race if you were known. Can you just kind of explain well, the sure. thought process after you found out that that was even something that well, was one of the rules? Because I assume you had no idea that would even qualify within something you weren't able to do. Right. So my first thought was, um, I can't believe this even counted as a race. Uh, you know, it was against supporters of people who were there at the meet supporting someone else. So no one was going out to this meet to run this race. It wasn't a competitive, this portion of the venue wasn't a competitive um, competitive race. You know, everyone who's out there was either a coach or a parent of someone else, a high school or in my case, my little brother racing. And so uh, when the NCAA ruled that I was racing competitively, I kind of thought this, in, in my mind, this wasn't a competitive race at all. You know, I had to get a run in that day, so I jumped in a race. Um, yeah, I mean, and uh, you know, obviously I didn't know that I was in violation of a rule. Um, certainly wouldn't have been worth even risking running that type of a race. And uh, yeah, it's just it's been a shocking situation. You know, I'm I've been really have been grateful to the NCAA for the years that I've had, and just hope that they rule similar to what I believe they have set a precedence for in other cases. Yeah, and so. I mean, you haven't been racing this whole season, you said, right? You no. haven't been able to because this would have been your fourth season. Right. So why is all the press getting so big right now? Did anyone kind of come to you and talk to you at the <laughs> beginning of the season? Like, hey, why aren't you racing at all? Because it's almost, I mean, it's the end of your season now. Well, at the beginning of the season, we thought uh, we didn't violate the spirit of the law, but the NCAA ruled that we had violated a rule, that we had broke a rule, that I had run a race because there was a start and a finish and it was timed.
And so because it was a race, I lost a year of eligibility. And um, it was a bummer, but that was the rule. And we thought, you know, the appeals process will probably favor us and we'll get it overturned, and it didn't. Um, and so we just kind of thought, well, you know, we disagree, but, um, but this is the NCAA's ruling, so we're going to live with it. Now, you know, a week ago, someone in a similar situation coming off a mission uh, gets their case overturned for what we feel is a similar case and then and then we feel like okay we have precedent we just want we just want the same treatment you know we just want to be able to uh, I just want to race you know I, I'm you know it's my it's my teammates that I've um, that I've grown to love over the last few years uh, a lot of them are seniors that I could be a senior with and uh, I just want one more race with my teammates at nationals and what is some of the feedback you've gotten from maybe friends, family, and just people that you've talked to about the situation? What are other people saying? Well, you know, it got a little bit of a stir about as far as just people saying, well, I don't think that that was, you know, people, everyone has their opinion. Um, but, but it seems to have been very, fairly vocal that they can't believe that this is what's happening or that I've lost a year for that. Um, I've, I've even had people, you know, contacting me saying, you know, you, you like I, you ought to get a lawyer or people volunteering and, and I'm not about, you know, I don't, I don't want to sue anybody. I just want to race, you know? And so I, I just hope that the NCAA looks at it in, in a light that says, okay, he wasn't in a violation of the spirit of the law. We've set a precedent with these other cases. His case is just as justifiable. Yeah, Let me play. Definitely understandable. <laughs> and do you have anything else you'd like to add or want us to know about the situation or this story? No, I look forward to talking with the uh, subcommittee tomorrow morning that the NCAA has provided and uh, hope that in the, the 10 minutes that they allot me that, um, that I can illustrate that I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to, to do anything that I think is wrong. You know, I'm just trying to, just trying to get one year back.